Harlem Never did much good Hiding Doesn't last forever You can't run faster When it's you You're running from So you throw your hands up Like doves to the setting sun Somewhere down The stars are falling Upon a thin black veil, you'll find the mysteries enthralling. Five seconds seems like five billion years, ten thousand galaxies away, yet still so near. Welcome to Karen Holton's podcast. Karen permanently lost 178 pounds and found happiness and success by following her own advice. She has now developed that advice into the quantum health transformation. Heal, evolve, and thrive. Karen's website offers a free webinar workshop series, and you'll also find tools, methods, and practices to assist you to become the change you want to see in the world. She believes that we are all connected. Heal the planet by healing yourself. Connect with Karen at her website, KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com, and through Facebook at Facebook.com slash Quantum Health Transformation. Now for the podcast. Welcome back for another installation of the Quantum Health Transformation version 3.0, Step 6 Yellow. Today we're going to cover total detoxification Part three, emotional detoxification. Step six, part three is designed for those who wish to improve their mental health and find a new way to benefit from the full range of emotions. It provides a holistic emotional detoxification program, knowledge about how our emotions work and healthful ways to interpret experiences for better coping techniques. Discover how to identify food-like products that affect the opiate center of the brain and cause addiction. Learn ways to identify and listen to our internal guidance system and how to holistically care for the mind. Be sure to also check out the corresponding video tutorial. So my students today are Don Rogers, Canadian Spinja, and Ray. Be sure to check out their channels. The links are listed below in the description. And to find out more about my work, all of the links are featured below in the description. Subscribe to my channels, leave me some comments, smash that like button and share this video with your friends. So uh, welcome guys, welcome back to, uh, to the Quantum Health Transformation. Good to see you again. So before we get, sorry, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for having us again. This is this has been this has been great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, before we get started in the screen share, I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts or questions or comments arising from step six, part one, which was the external detoxification, and then part two, which was internal detoxification. Like I said before, this is the most difficult part of the whole program um, because it involves changing. Uh, our habits and our lifestyle, but I'm just wondering if you had anything you want to say about it. Um, I know for Spin and I personally, we, there's been a lot of discussion because we've stopped using the petroleum-based shampoos and shampoos with fragrances and conditioners and whatnot. And we're, we're being very mindful of the condition of our hair. Like, are we going too far? Do we need to get something with a little bit of something? Like, because it, it's still our hair. We still want it to be healthy. It's still a part of our, our vessel, you know. So it, it's definitely been a lot more in the forefront of conversation as we're phasing things out. Uh, is it too much? Are we going through detox? Is it harmful? Okay, we'll, we'll roll it back. And I, I think that this whole thing has opened up a lot more of an open forum about natural hygiene. Oh, good. That's the whole point. The whole point is you raise your awareness, you start noticing changes you want to make within your own routine. You don't change everything all at once. You start switching things out. You know what I forgot to tell you last week? 
was we live in Alberta where the where the water's really hard. And when you shampoo your hair, it can often be kind of stiff afterwards or get a, a, a mineral buildup. So I forgot to tell you that you can make a, a rinse with uh, vinegar. I use apple cider vinegar. And you just squeeze that, rub it into your scalp and work it down your hair, rinse it out, always rinse it out. Your hair will be absolutely baby soft with no mineral buildup. And I forgot to tell you that. So that's a that lot cheaper missing. than buy-in conditioners. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was the missing piece that I was I was wondering about. Yeah, you guys can send me a... You guys can shoot me a text anytime you have, you know, you want to know how do you do this or how do you do, I might have an idea because I've been at this for a while. So um, and I wanted to, I wanted to comment about the, um, the, uh, the tallow uh, cream. So this, this week, um, my hands were extra dry for some reason or another. And I just, I pulled it out and just beautiful, just yeah, it's amazing. So I sent you a link to another uh, YouTube channel where the woman, where, that's where I learned how to make it. And uh, it's very, very easy and very cheap to make. And uh, and it lasts like almost forever. So, I mean, it's just, you can't lose with this stuff. And I'm not kidding. It works out to just pennies, absolute pennies. So, you know, I'm all for saving money in this uh, expensive world we live in, right? Okay, so let's go to the screen share. Here we are. So again, we're starting on the landing page that has an overview of the complete program. And those of you who are listening on an audio uh, platform, please do come over and check out the, the live uh, videos Sorry, they're not live sessions, but they're, you know, videos so that you can take a full, um, so you can take in the full program because a lot of the images really uh, give you a lot of information. And then you get to see an overview of the entire program as well. So this is Quantum Health Transformation. It's a new health paradigm. It was written by myself, Karen Holton. This is version 3.0, the advanced training for healers and alternative health practitioners. Step six, yellow, total detoxification. Part three, emotional detoxification. So this information that we're showing today is from the PDF primer and it's meant to accompany the corresponding live tutorial as well as the workshop that we're doing today. And it has the same name. And if you take a look at the playlist, my playlist on YouTube, or if you take a look at the website um, and look at the program there, it's all laid out for you. Just got to watch one video and then another. And of course, if you want to order the PDF, you can from my website as well. Both Primer and the Live Quantum Health Transformation version 3.0 workshops are presented in descending number order as published. So you start with step nine and you work your way down to do step one last. And just as a reminder, all information presented in any quantum health transformation media was received in a download and was channeled from the Living Library, also known as the Akashic Records. Further, this material was downstepped and developed through the filter of my own personal life experience. I'm not an expert, a mathematician, or a scientist. I am a seeker of knowledge and wisdom. The Quantum Health Transformation Program is ideal for those who are awakening and for those who are experiencing ascension symptoms, but the content is beneficial for everyone who wishes to experience a better quality of life. The system of quantum health transformation works well for me. However, you must synthesize this information and take only that which serves you. At the very least, it is my hope that from this material, you will be stimulated to seek your own inner wisdom. And as a special note, any part of the Quantum Health Transformation original, version 2.0 or version 3.0 series, can be copied and shared for free under the Fair Use Clause, as long as credit is given to myself, Karen Holton. Thank you. 
And please help to support my work by downloading and asking your clients and your customers to purchase the PDF copies of this presentation from my website shop. And I'm charging $3.99 for each step section. And um, that's Canadian. So that's about maybe $2.50 American. So it's very, very affordable for everybody. I have to read a brief disclaimer. This PDF and the information on our website, KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com, is presented as is for educational purposes only. It is not intended as a substitute for the diagnosis, treatment, or advice of a qualified licensed medical professional. The facts presented in this presentation or on the website are offered as information only, not medical advice, and in no way should anyone infer that we are practicing medicine. Seek the advice of a medical professional for proper application of this material to any specific situation. No statement here or on the website has been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, the CFIA, the Department of Health Canada, or any other regulatory authority. Any product mentioned or described in this presentation or website <clears throat> is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. We recommend that you do your own independent research before purchasing anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with that out of the way, there are three parts to detoxification. Part one was external detoxification. Part two was internal detoxification. And today we're going to consider, consider part three, emotional detoxification. Each part is comprehensive and deserves its own primer. So preview all three primer videos for step six. So if you haven't done so already, I highly recommend you go back and watch part one and part two before you watch part three. Part three, emotional detoxification. Regardless of your emotional situation, things will change for the better physically and mentally. Once you get off sugar and the other toxic elements found in food-like products, you will notice the difference almost immediately. So for those of you who are on audio, you might want to come over and watch the video. Here's an image of me before quantum health transformation. Here I am in my house coat eating my usual breakfast of peanut butter on toast. I used to be a carboholic while I was overweight. I found withdrawing from sugar, grain products, and other carbohydrates was more difficult than quitting tobacco or alcohol. While I was consuming refined carbs, I had terrible mood swings, frequent bouts of depression, anxiety, and so many physical health problems that I became disabled. I couldn't concentrate or control my temper, and here's why. Sugars and refined carbohydrates affect the brain and the body the same way as cocaine. They both cause a short-lived intense high that is immediately followed by the opposite, intense depression, edginess, and a craving for more. People who use either of these derivatives often don't eat or sleep properly. Both can make people feel paranoid, angry, hostile, and anxious. Sugars, refined carbohydrates, and most other food-like substances absolutely do affect your emotions, your feelings, and your health. Here are some other effects that cocaine and sugar have in common. Increased heart rate, blood pressure, and body temperature. Contracted blood vessels. Increased rate of breathing. Disturbed sleep patterns a temporary increase in the sense of energy and alertness, an elevated mood, hyperstimulation and restlessness, bizarre, erratic, sometimes violent behavior, hyperexcitability, irritability, euphoria, nausea and upset stomach, depression, 
anxiety and paranoia, intense cravings, panic attacks, and psychosis. Deep in the brain, both sugars and cocaine interfere with the chemical messengers, they're called neurotransmitters, that nerves use to communicate with each other. They block norepinephrine, serotonin, dopamine, and other neurotransmitters neurotransmi from being reabsorbed. The resulting chemical buildup between nerves causes euphoria or feeling high. Eating high sugar foods lights up your brain on an MRI like a Christmas tree. Dr. Mark Hyman, MD, founder and medical director of Ultra Wellness Center, said during a recent interview on HuffPost Live. So here's the link. If you have the PDF, you can just link to the, to the study. The part of the brain that lights up is the very same part of the brain that's triggered by cocaine or heroin, according to research by Dr. David Ludwig, MD, PhD. Signs that you might be addicted to the sweet stuff. Do you crave sugar and carbs? Do you have trouble losing weight? Do you have high blood sugar or high blood pressure? Do you eat even when you're not hungry? Are you sluggish from overeating? Do you have embarrassed feelings about eating, binge in secret or hide food? Do you feel agitated, can't sleep, or suffer withdrawal symptoms if you don't eat junk foods? Listen to your body. Let's assume that you've taken Quantum Health Transformation Step 6 Parts 1 and 2 seriously, and you are actively detoxifying your inner and outer selves. What is emotional detoxification about? Emotions affect us physically. Positive emotions have a therapeutic effect on the body, which is why we call them good feelings. While negative emotions take energy away from the system and can cause brain stress, which is discharged into the body, causing undesirable feelings and sensations. Excessive brain stress is discharged into the physical body, causing illness, pain, and suffering. Physical sensation provides our warning or our guidance system. We do well to listen to it. So just to recap so far, certain what we call food-like substances trigger the same part of the brain as cocaine and heroin, and they're extremely addictive. So it's not our fault that we keep wanting to go back for more and more and more. But then we also see a very high incidence of people exp experiencing depression, anxiety, they can't sleep better, they feel nervous energy, jittery, and it doesn't occur to them it might be what they're eating. And as brought out on this slide, our emotions affect us physically. So yeah, we have a very short-lived high that we get from eating sugar and other food-like substances, but then we have the crash. And I don't know if you know people who get what they call hangry, where they get angry yeah. when they're hungry. They don't realize it's because they need to eat. Well, that's a classic uh, symptom that they're, um, they're, they've been stimulating the opioid center of their brains and causes us to act irrationally, even though we're trying hard not to. And then these negative emotions actually take energy away from our whole body and they cause brain stress. And then that brain stress has to discharge someplace. So it discharges into the body. And then we have negative emotional responses like anxiety and depression. And we also get sick in other ways because it causes um, discomfort and um, dis-ease. And so that's why it's so important to take a look at that component. Did you folks have anything you wanted to add before we move on? Oh my goodness, Karen, like the, the parallels, um, I like, um, when I was going, going over the PDF, I saw the picture of you and I'm, I'm not sure if I mentioned this. Um, there was, there was a point, um, it was just before I met Dawn, I was, um, about 260, 270 pounds. Yeah. And, um, 
and what you're what you're saying like it just it's it, it, you, you like I couldn't agree more with like with my experience now um and again I'm going to like you you're saying about this is not medical advice so I am not recommending what I'm about to share um you know do your own research for me um I knew that I had some thyroid problems and or that's what I was told anyway and so my friend went um on uh, keto Yes. And so I made the decision to go on keto just as elimination, just to see, you know, like, it, and it was hard, um, eliminate sugar, sugar and carbs. And uh, there was a lot of bacon involved, which was good, but, um, but just everything that you're saying, that was, that was my experience. Yeah. Like as you know, and, and kicking the sugar it was it was so hard yeah it's um it's really tough it's really tough and it, it, uh it, interesting, it was... interesting that you should say about the ketogenic i have to have a ketogenic lifestyle because i and that just me i you know that means keeping your carbs very low but that's what agrees with me and then i don't have depression and anxiety for me, it's worth it. it was it, worth uh, detoxifying for sure. We're going to really get into that in, the ne in next week's study about food. Don, did you want to add something? I I did. I just want to validate what you're saying because as a person that's comfortable with having lived a life of battling many different addictions, I can say cognitively, physically, and emotionally, <laughs> the comparison of cocaine and sugar is very, very reasonable. Um, I, I've dealt with both i'm still fighting sugar so there's a major point is i beat cocaine before sugar yeah so well, it's when, a very very valid yeah when rats were given the choice between cocaine or sugar they chose the sugar so um and you know it's funny like i i also am a recovering addict and when i was trying to quit alcohol i went to aa and they always tell you to go out and have sh eat sugar to help you get over the alcohol cravings. But unfortunately, what they didn't say was that sugar becomes alcohol in the system. And, <laughs> and it's kind of like putting out the fire with gasoline. So although aspects of the quantum health transformation program are not pleasant, not easy to hear, I have to tell the truth, you know, I have to tell the truth. So, you know, hopefully, Hopefully people are willing to take a look at that. Yeah, and it's not easy. And sugars in everything. Oh, my God. Or artificial sweeteners, which are actually yes. worse. They're in everything. One of, one of the ways that helped me, because, you know, like it was like baby steps and it was that bad. Yeah. Um, was uh, I switched over to stevia. And yeah. I made the. Like and it, and it was it was a keto recipe for like mini cheesecakes. Yeah. And so, so when I would get the sugar craving, that was when that like that's what I would use to get by. It yeah. wasn't perfect, but it was one step closer. Absolutely. And then I was able to. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Now I myself can't do stevia even because it, what it does is it reawakens the cravings. It just reminds my body of what sweet yeah. tastes like. I also can't do dairy and there's all kinds of things I can't do. I've tried. I just can't. So we'll get into that more, more next week, but that's really good advice, Spenja, because, um, you know, it's not always easy to go from one to the other. Sometimes we need these interim stages. And it's funny what you said about bacon. I actually don't do well with bacon, but I do eat bacon because sometimes you just need that crunchy, nice, a uh, smoky flavor just to to give variety to your diet plus you know not everybody can just afford to eat beef at every meal let's face it you know pork is so much cheaper so um you know that's why i don't tell people you can or cannot eat you know meats or vegetables or whatever i just tell people look at whole foods real food that's the really important part so we're going to get into that a little bit too. So um, uh, did you, any of you have anything else to say before I continue? No. Okay. 
So I did not listen to my body for many years, and I experienced much mental and physical illness, disease, and suffering as a result. I kept going to the doctor expecting a pill to cure my ills, but this did not help. Believe me, I went to the doctor a lot, and I took a lot of pharmaceuticals. I took even took antidepressants, anti-anxiety, anti-seizure medications, anti-psychotic medications, like I tried everything and nothing worked because I wasn't removing the cause of the issue, you know? And when people get sick and tired of being sick and tired, maybe they're ready to have a look at something different. And I don't know what else to say. There's no easy way out. The only way out is to go through it, you know? And then my karma was, uh, you know, all the damage I did to my body. And then, you know, recovering from that is slow and somewhat painful. So, you know, I also want to make just a quick note here. Um, I do later on get into, um, I think in step three or step two, I get it. I think step two, I will be getting into the use, appropriate use of psychedelics. But I want to make a note about uh, cannabis because I myself used cannabis in my recovery for many years and I don't know how I could have gotten through without it. So I'm just going to be honest and let people know that I have used cannabis quite a lot. But then I got to the point where I wasn't getting better and I had cannabis that basically I think to be honest with you, my opinion is, and this is just my opinion, not medical advice. I believe that cannabis is evidence of God's tender mercy, because when you're suffering, it is really good medication. So I'm not, you know, that's my stand on it. But I got to the point yes. where it was making the intolerable tolerable. And I had to stop using it in order to feel the discomfort to fine tune my lifestyle. And that's when I found out that I couldn't do dairy and that I couldn't do stevie and things like that. Because before that, I was using cannabis to sort of cover, help me with the symptoms. But sometimes the symptom is the healing. The symptom is the healing. It's our guidance system. So I had to go off it. In fact, I'm actually still off it because I'm still fine tuning my system, finding out what I can and can't eat because it's so noticeable without the cannabis. Uh, also, I'm finding I'm having way better uh, transdimensional dream states without it, um, whereas you would have some sort of transdimensional states with it. Uh, without it, you have a different, a whole different thing. So anyway, I won't go on too much about it. I just want to put my two cents in and be honest and forthcoming about that. So um, here's a simple alternative I use in my life now, which illustrates the power of our emotions. And I call it me, myself, and I integration training. And I wrote this back in 2010. So it, it's basically me equals my body, myself equals my mind, and I, my subconscious. So there's an interplay so when we combine me, my body, with myself, which is my mind, it equals my emotions and my physical feelings. So um, you can see that the body is instrumental in having us feel our emotions and also what we think, and they work together very much. Often what comes up in the mind then affects the body, and that's what gives us our emotions and our physical feelings. Then myself, which is my mind, and my subconscious, which is I, equals my imagination and my desires. So what I think about, and also my subconscious agenda or guidance system, gives me my imagination and my desires. And then I, which is my subconscious, and me, my body, they also work together to give me my intuitive feelings. So, you know, when you feel something is wrong in your gut, but you can't put your finger on it, that's excluding the mind. That's the subconscious working directly with your body. So that's the interplay. And I know this can be a bit confusing, but for those of you on audio, I highly recommend come over and see the visuals. It really helps to sort of keep things organized and straight. Hi, guys. 
Break time for a short message. YouTube will not monetize me, so if you enjoy my content and want to support my efforts, help me to cover my expenses by visiting my shop to buy yourself a beautiful organ generator. Zendome's Organite are my unique brand, and they are ethically sourced, handmade, and double-charged for maximum effect. They are only available through my website, www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com. Many people are finding comfort with Zendome's organ generators, commonly called Organite. They are a simple compound which balance ambient energy by converting negative energy and EMF into positive healing energy with many easily confirmed health benefits. They are a simple compound with alchemic and energetic properties. These devices function as self-driven, continuously operating, highly efficient, negative to positive energy transmutation factories. They help diminish the harmful effects of electromagnetic frequency radiation by attracting and converting negative energies, retuning them into new and more healthful sound and light wave patterns, and they help to purify the atmosphere and accelerate plant growth. They also help stimulate positive mood and are a natural remedy for poor sleep patterns. When Organite is within range of any corded or wireless electronic device, it will efficiently and continuously transform that energy into orgone as it is being transmitted. This essentially creates orgone energy transmitters out of any and all emitters of harmful negative energy. You can use these devices for focusing the mind, healing, meditation, and for spiritual growth. Zendome's Organite are my unique brand of orgone generators and they are only available through my website. Don't be fooled by imitations. Check out my website to see my latest selection at www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com That's K-A-R-E-N-H-O-L-T-O-N healthcoach.com Check them out today. Now, let's get back to the show. So let's talk about me, my body, and myself, which is my mind, which equals my emotions. So the first thing is I say, shh, to myself, which means shut up my mind. Most people need training to pacify their minds so that their emotions can become calm. Only when we stop thinking can the mind receive helpful messages from the imagination and the intuition, which is from our subconscious. So again, you can see how sugar and other food-like substances can really interfere with that. It's almost impossible to calm your mind when we're addicted to those substances. And there are many ways that we can calm the mind. We can listen to masters like Eckhart Tolle, Mike Dooley, and Michael, I think it's Michael Bernard Beckwith. We can listen to calming music and solfeggio frequencies. We can practice prayer and meditation daily. And again, go back to step eight and review the different techniques that I've already taught in previous lessons. Spend time every day just being aware of what is going on inside your skin while you stop thinking about things. Become grateful for life and all the wonders that surround you. So basically, it just means being able to sit or lie quietly and not think about anything, just feeling what's going on in your body. And then you go, oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. My right knee is hurting. My back hurts here. I'm I'm feeling a bit anxious. My heart's beating a little heavy. What's going on here? And then we can start taking a look. As soon as we notice those things, It's interesting how they start to heal immediately. So for instance, if I've got a sore hip or a sore knee, and I just recognize that I'm having pain in that area and I need some healing, it's like the body then automatically starts to heal it. But if I'm busy thinking about what the neighbor's doing or what my mother-in-law said, I am not in touch with what's going on in my body. Then there's myself, my mind, 
and I, my subconscious, which equals my imagination. When our imaginations and, and or our intuitions spontaneously override the mind and affect our thoughts and feelings, we lose our calm and we become aware that, there, that we are out of balance. So that might be that basically um, we just start feeling overwhelmed, that feeling of being overwhelmed. And we can't quite put our finger on it, but we're feeling really overwhelmed. That's the subconscious acting directly with your mind. It overrides the body and gives you those sensations so that you can know that there's something wrong. So when that happens, then our ego becomes distressed because it wants to be in control. And we feel anxious and we may experience panic attacks. So I used to have terrible panic attacks to the point where I couldn't leave the house. I could not leave the house. Just thinking about leaving the house made me so anxious. And then I would have a panic attack and then I couldn't think. I couldn't function. I couldn't shop. I couldn't do anything. It was horrible. But it was a warning system to let me know I was out of balance. This is actually a healthy warning system here to remind us to become more aware and to put more balance into our chosen lifestyles. We need to become aware of our body sensations instead of thinking about people, places, and things so much. Again, we spend too much time in the head, way too much time. And, I, and that would also include screen time, I think, you know. So it helps to strengthen the mind and imagination with affirmations and visualization techniques. Spend more time being and less time doing. So I don't know if you know folks that like to go fishing, but people who like to go fishing generally have a more relaxed approach to life. You can sit there and just fish. You don't have to think about anything. You're just fishing. You're just being. Well, you're doing, but basically you're just being. Really makes a big difference. And then there's I, my subconscious, and me, my body, which equals my intuition. As soon as we are calm and we feel internal sensations without thinking thoughts, integration spontaneously begins. This is why meditation, qigong, tai chi, and yoga are such excellent avenues for healing. Our souls are our subconscious selves, which hold vast amounts of data and knowledge is power. Our own built-in intuition will guide us and let us know what to do. When we live consciously and mindfully, the messages easily flow into our awareness and we know exactly what to do in any given situation. Take advantage of this powerful inner resource. We are unique, complex combinations of genetic factors, life experiences, and wisdoms. Learn to trust yourself. So before we go on, is there any questions or comments? Oh, um, I was going to say um, when you were when you were describing the the piece like with fishing, yeah. I actually experienced something very similar when I sit down at my spinning wheel. Yes, actually, even knitting and crocheting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, very similar. Very similar. It sort of takes up that part of our monkey brain, you know, so we can think clearer okay. and we can take in, you know, we can understand things, our bodies, or we could get the messages, you know, pop through easier. Absolutely. Um, and it takes me back to um, like the knitting, like now, now I do it just because like it, it is a way to, to relax and chill and, and, uh, and whatnot, but it, it was at one point a coping mechanism for me. Um, because I don't, uh, I, I don't like doing groups to begin with. Yeah. And, um, I, uh, I, I had, to, well, I, I did this group because I wanted to work on myself. Um, it was a, it was a group for moms and, uh, there was a really, um, heavy topic that they had. They had somebody in from, from the women's shelter and, it was just like a parallel, like some of the experiences that you talked about is what I had. And, and so 
I had my knitting there to help me. And I think if I didn't, if I didn't have it, I would have, I would have had to leave the room. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes people find doing puzzles also the same yes. thing, doing puzzles. There's, there's many ways to do this. So, um, as I keep saying, real food powers me, myself, and I. Healthful foods and beverages with life force. And we'll learn about that in step five, which is next week. They heal the body and the mind. Meditation also heals the mind. And the soul, under all circumstances, remains intact as we learn to understand and utilize this amazing personal built-in resource. So our soul never gets sick. It's always intact, but it's whether or not we want to listen to the messages from our soul that come via our subconscious mind. And we'll get into that in future lessons as well. So we hold the power to achieve quantum well-being. Further, choose introspection over worry. Introspection allows you to learn from the past by viewing it more objectively. Once we learn the lesson, we can let, let it go along with the negative energy it may be holding. This allows us to course correct in the now and ensure a better tomorrow. So as an older person, it's really quite lovely if I something comes to mind and I start remembering a, an experience that wasn't very pleasant. All I have to do is get the lesson. What was the lesson? Maybe the lesson was to think more about myself and protect myself and not be around certain kinds of people, or learn how to deal with situations differently. And as soon as I come to that realization, I can let go of the negative memory. It's gone. It doesn't bother me anymore. And I can course correct in the now, make darn sure I take good care of myself and protect myself. I'm worth protecting in the now. And then tomorrow just gets better and better. It's course correcting. Become self-aware. Watch yourself as though you are an inside observer. Refrain from criticism and keep a sense of humor. And again, you might want to go back and review step eight. Learn to mind your own business. Believe me, it's enough. What we got on going on in our own life is enough. It really is. Sometimes too much, right? And it's really hard to keep from criticizing ourselves. We have these voices that go, well, you should have tried harder and you should have known better and you should have this and should have that. Yeah, no, that needs to stop. Do We need to stop doing that. It's like, it's as though we spent our life with someone hitting us over the head with a big stick. And now we've picked up the stick and we're hitting ourselves over the head with the stick. No, no good. Stop that. Stop that right now. Do not be so interested in what other people are doing, saying, and thinking. You can't possibly get it right anyways. And again, I refer you back to step nine on the nubby ball tool. Believe in yourself and in your ability to succeed. The power to succeed in anything you wish for is inside of you. Focus on your sincere desires. Change them whenever you want. Affirm your requests daily to yourself or even through prayer. Now move outside of your comfort zone, take a step toward your goal, and discover the awaiting adventure. Your initial small successes will build confidence and improve your self-esteem. A state of well-being means pleasure for the body. There is so much pleasure in using the body that sustains us and moves us about in this great adventure called life. And I'm talking about once we've made the necessary changes to bring that comfort into the body. It's really, really important and really worth it. It's like I said before, I never knew that my body could be this comfortable. I just love it. I love being alive. It's a pleasure. Energy is a gift that you give to yourself. Physical vitality lends to happiness and peace of mind. Now, if it's okay, Don, I want to use you as an example in this, where I yeah. talk about moving outside of your comfort zone. Um, you know, you've had to move outside of your comfort zone since you're awake, since your awakening, and you've reached out to me and to Rob and to Maya and different people. But if you hadn't have done that, would you be where you are today? 
Oh, absolutely not. And I wouldn't even want to try to fathom where my psychological state would be. Yeah. Because like, without this community and without the resources that have I've been able to get in touch with, I wouldn't have understood any of this. Right. And that's why programs like are absolutely necessary because you don't just know these things when you wake up. You're programmed. Society is the trap. Society is the trick to everything, right? We're not even supposed to be doing it the way we're doing it, but we won't go into that. But wake up, you realize that holy shit, I don't know anything about the way I'm supposed to really be or what I've been through. Yeah. So this program and exactly what you're saying, like you have to be able to access the information in your head too. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I hope I've answered your question. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we have to uh, find out what our sincere desires are, focus on them. And then we got to step outside of our comfort zone. If we're doing things the same old, same old, same old, we're going to get the same old, same old, same old. And it's amazing what we can accomplish when we're willing to take courage. Really, it takes courage. It's It's been fun, too. Like, I know, um, so I don't know if uh, the, the viewers have been following along. The short version is um, Don made the decision to leave his his job um last october because like his boss was very very toxic and it just wasn't a good scene Mm -hmm. and he felt himself declining like becoming more irritable and it was it was impacting his family life and he when he called to tell me he just he sounded mortified like you know like he he felt he felt like he did something horrible to the family and i just told him like We'll, we'll just, we'll take one step at a time and, and see where things go. And I'm, I'm so glad, you know, and, and things have, they've been tight. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest about that, but it's been worth it mm-hmm. because, you know, like for, for me, I get to, I get to see him. He's doing things now that I saw sparks of in the past, but, but since since he's taken this time out for himself oh my goodness like he was he was bundled up in this cocoon for so long and now his wings are out and he is flying yeah yeah it's awesome and inspiring other people it's not you know when we start to uh get our freedom and our wings we're inspiring other people to get their freedom and their their wings too so yeah thank you for sharing that so um, a state of well-being means happiness for the mind. Once our body experiences the pleasurable sensations that come with feeling better, you begin to relax. The mind begins to accept pleasure in the forms of happiness, peacefulness, and joyfulness. The mind soon finds healthful ways to interpret experiences, and you begin to find better coping techniques. Life gets better. A state of well-being means joy for the spirit. Once the body and mind are satisfied, the natural orientation of the soul becomes joyful. Our souls are our subconscious selves, which hold vast amounts of data, and its communication de- and its communication device is our intuition. With a calm mind and comfortable body, all of our internal communication systems can function fully. Our natural, healthful orientation is experienced as more well-being. So it's kind of a snowball effect. Daily practice of a detoxifying lifestyle will rapidly improve your state of well-being. What are you going to do with all that feel-good energy? And there's a, an image here of all different uh, emoticons or emojis of different emotions and different words. It says, welcome all feelings and thoughts with equal regard. They're all important. About the power of emotions. Some new age enthusiasts avoid facing negative, emo- uh, negative emotions for fear they will be pulled into a lower vibrational state. Some believe this will hinder their spiritual progress and their ability to manifest their desires. 
Realistically, though, it is not possible to be up and happy all of the time. This would interfere with the natural ebb and flow of all things. Life without contrast has no meaning, but avoid fear-based thinking from any source. So there are many, many uh, gurus out there who say, yeah, no, you can't get frustrated. You can't get angry. You're going to bring more of that into your life. You're going to manifest that. You know, lower your frequency. Well, I call BS on that. If we don't deal with all, aspe all aspects of our emotions and our life, then we're just pushing it back into the shadow realm. It's still there, and it's going to cause us some grief in the long run. But I do avoid fear-based thinking. So when people say, oh, you can't do this, or this is going to happen, or, you know, we're all going to be destroyed on Monday because of a comet, you know, or something like that. No, no, not necessarily. And if, if so, oh, so be it. We've lived well. Be like the Klingons, you know. <laughs> be courageous. Emotions and feelings come in layers and intensities, just like music. It's all energy. Sadness is not that far from joy. Anger and love are both passionate. Agony and ecstasy feel similar, and both can become states for physical and emotional addiction. The opposite of love is not hate, but apathy. Love is light. It can shine dim or bright, but it's still love. Total apathy, like total darkness, does not exist. The vibrational state of music changes in octaves, and the same is true of emotion. No emotion is good or bad. They are states of feeling, which are partly emotional and partly physical. Joy is an octave above sadness. When I feel joyful, I produce tears, and the overall body sensation is very much the same as when I feel sad. The difference is in the interpretation of the feeling and the thoughts associated with the emotion, which produces the vibrational state. So yeah, a lot of people think the opposite to love is hate. No, it's not. It's apathy. Apathy is I don't care. When they just don't care, complete lack of empathy and compassion. That's the opposite to love. But where there's strong emotion, there's passion, you know, and we can make all of those emotions work for us. Sometimes we occupy our awareness with strong emotion to keep us from facing our fears. When we face our fears, they disappear, and the strong emotion we once used to cover them dissipates into calm. So I'll give you an example. Sometimes when I'm afraid of something or a certain outcome, I'll get angry, and anger covers the fact that I'm afraid. But often if I just sit with it and go, you know, why am I so angry? What's going on with me? I realize it's actually a fear. And when we face our fears, they disappear. And when they disappear, we have no use for those strong emotions anymore. I think this can be also tied in with addictions a little bit. Same kind of scenario. When we stop censoring and suppressing our full range of emotion, we can use feelings as teachers and guides. Once we learn the lesson, we often return to a peaceful state, which I will call contentment. Conscious thoughtlessness and contentment go hand in hand. This leaves room for conscious living and much energy for manifesting that which we desire. Now, this is the healing power of emotion and something to think about. So my mom had a little poem she used to say. She used to say, sometimes I sit and thinks and sometimes I just sit. Well, I was never able to do that because I had too much stress energy all the time, but I can do that now. And yeah, sometimes it's just so glorious just to sit, relax, recline, and feel the sunshine on my face and the breeze between my toes. We finally got springtime, so we can do a little bit of that now. Just feels so good to be inside our body. And that is so precious. We don't want to do anything to lose it. It's just amazing. So before I read the conclusion, do you folks have anything, thoughts? Yes, Don. Um, something you mentioned ego there a couple of times, and that was something, a mistake. I, I don't, it wasn't a mistake. It was a learning. 
yeah. when I came <clears throat> of what I really wanted, I was like, oh my God, that little bitch, the ego needs to die now. What an asshole. And that, like, I, I became like a completely opposite person. I wanted to live in the light of source at all times. And I did not want a dark thought. And I realized you can't do that either. Mm -mm. Like, no, you your ego. Just, yes, you can, but you can't just destroy your ego out of the gate either because it, it neutralizes who you are. Well, yeah, you need, yeah, you need it. it. It's, it's trying to protect us. It's trying to... Sometimes it will likes to be a control freak, right? So sometimes we have to, but really all you have to do is recognize it and call it out and that takes care of it. But yeah, it's a necessary part of being for sure. Yeah. So there's an image on this page for those of you who are listening on audio. It says, want to win at the game of life? To win, we must deal with our shit before we die. That simple. It has nothing to do with what you own or how much money you have dealing with our shit. And it's the last thing anybody wants to do, right? But it's really important. So in conclusion to part three, now you know how to stop toxifying yourself and have found ways to detoxify your internal and external selves. You have also discovered the power within emotion and it's time to move on to the Quantum Health Transformation version 3.0, Advanced Training for Healers and Alternative Health Practitioners, Step 6 Yellow, Total Detoxification, Part 3, Emotional Detoxification, and I would say live tutorial if you haven't already done so. Peaceful mind, peaceful life. And here's a link to the program on my website. This concludes the quantum health transformation. Step six, yellow, total detoxification. Part three, emotional detoxification. Please feel free to contact me for more information and for assistance with your self-care program. I'm grateful for all the forces that assist me with the production of this free nine-step online course. So after you've watched the uh, video tutorial and this workshop, it's time. Please join me for the next step in this online course called Step 5 Green, Food is Medicine and Source of Universal Love Energy. If you want to contact me, my name is Karen Holton. I'm a holistic wellness coach and a talk show host. <clears throat> you can find me at www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com. That's K-A-R-E-N-H-O-L-T-O-N, healthcoach.com. You can find me on YouTube and other social media platforms at Karen Holton TV. And if you want to email me, you can email me at quantumhealthnow at gmail.com. And if you purchase this PDF, you will have all the links to all of my free resources, my helpful videos, this course, um, my Fringe View podcast, which are all about my paranormal experiences, links to all the guest appearances I have had on many other shows, including uh, Don's show, the Roundtable show, which he's going to tell you about in a few minutes. And um, I have some published articles and also uh, the links direct directly to find me on YouTube, Rumble, and Odyssey. And please do come and subscribe and... Um, and follow me. I would really appreciate it. And that's the end of today's lesson. So how did you folks find it? I like that. It, it definitely some, there's a lot of things I'm going to be able to try and implement over the next little while. And it's like all of it. And, and, and again, there's more gaps that have been filled in for me. Like these are, these are things that I've, I have been working on. And uh, I can just, um, you know, like I, I am a little bit, I, I am doing well with, with healing, like with, with this step, but I need to say like, when you do take control over it, um, for me, I've noticed like, even at work, like I am an industrial sewing machine operator and where I am now during my day versus where I was like a year ago or even six months ago, um, 
my mind is clearer and I've been working on healing. I, you know, I've been talking to my shadow, like, you know, like there's different things when I, you know, and, um, it, my productivity has gone up. Like since, since I've been working on healing, my work productivity has gone up and that like, you know, like seeing that it's, it's, and it's like, it's a small, it's a snowball because it's like, Oh wow, I'm, I'm doing really well at work. So what can I do at home? So, I mean, it's, it's, you, you start and you have to push and you have to push and it feels like it's so hard. You feel like you're stuck in the mud and then eventually you just get some traction and boom, you're gone. It is so worth doing the work and facing your shadow and asking yourself these questions. It's worth it. And a, a couple of things I wanted to add, like, it, it's interesting because like the manifestation abilities are already becoming more apparent. We'll say like, we've had a couple of incidences like spin and I often, you know, daydream about what life beyond this density would be. And she's like, I want to make a cat suit. So she goes to her job as an industrial sewer last week. And this conversation took place last weekend. I want to make a cat suit. Now she means like one of those people, femme fatale spy cat suits but it turns out she ends up on a project with her boss making a a cat suit for oh, the gymnastics awesome. she go ahead the boss was was having um she was having a hard time um she was given a theme and she was having a hard time coming up because she had to come up with a whole bunch of different things and so she gave me um, it was it was a song, and so I, I played the lyrics through my head, and it's like, okay, I'm going to put this out to her that because she loves cats, she is all about cats, and so I and I could tell that she was frazzled because if it, with the with her love of cats, she would have clued in like, here's an excuse to use cats, and so. <laughs> So I, I played, I did that. And then I, and, but where I'm going with this is because my mind was clear because I've been doing the work and, and trying to, trying to settle down. I was able to come up with the idea for the cat suit and the universe being the way that it is with its sense of humor. Yes. I got to take part in making a cat suit. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Well, that's, that's really fantastic. Yeah. I mean, there's no limit to where we can go with all of this. So for those of you um, who are new joining the program, the first three steps are steps nine, eight, and seven. And those three steps help you to open your mind and be ready for the changes. Then step six, which we've now completed. Steps five, which is going to be all about food. And steps four, which is all about how to detoxify from the construct, are all about detoxifying on every aspect of our life. And you can see why that's really important before we step into the last three steps, which you're going to love. You're just going to, I, I know you're just going to love it. Starting with step four, you guys are going to get really excited. <laughs> so, uh, but this is the hard part, the, the detoxifying. So um, I think we've pretty much covered everything for today, but I want to give you guys a chance to talk about what you're doing, what you offer. Spinge, I understand yep. you now have a YouTube, your own YouTube channel. I'll have the links below for everybody. Please do check them out. Yes, um, I I got that on the on the go. Um, I was just using Dawn's um, channel, but uh, no, I decided it was time. I'm grabbing the bull by the horns. I'm still working ten to twelve hour days, but I am done being controlled like I feel like my exhaustion and everything is controlling me so this is the part where you know I was just saying about pushing through so mm -hmm. I'm going to push through to the best of my ability because um I, I just feel like there's a lot of information that I can I can contribute but the, the people that I have um that, that I want to interview it, it's going to be an opportunity for them to contribute as well and you know like we, like we talked and I've I've asked you to to be my, my first guest and it's um it's a platform so basically um 
you know, like you've, you've been doing a lot of work, um, with, with angels and aliens and, you know, like talking, talking about disclosure and like a lot of the podcasts that, that I followed, like has been so wonderful talking about like what's going on and, and, you know, like the deception and all that. But I, I got to the point, it's like, I'm looking around and it's like, okay, so we know this information now what? Mm -hmm. And so that's, what I'm trying to compile is, you know, like, what do we do next? So this is, this is where you fit in and the, the quantum, the quantum health transformation program, like it, it is perfect um, because it's, it's something, you know, like, what can we do about all of this? Well, mm -hmm. one of the steps heal ourselves, like that's huge, huge. Yeah. And I have plans on interviewing other people as well for what they're doing in regards to just coping um, and, and getting, getting through. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, there's going to be some, um, some farmsteading, like growing your own food, making your own food. I'm also going to be doing um, fiber art stuff. Like I'm going to have, I'm going to have my spinning wheel. I'm going to be talking about that. And basically just putting things out there for people to get some inspiration to ask more questions. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. And Dawn, you've got the round table show, but you're doing work with Maya and. Oh yeah. Um, because of the round table show uh, last week, I had on a, a panelist, Brian Sang, who's a, a very well-known individual in the, per the community that we live function in um i'm just trying to think how to word this properly and he was kind enough to come on as a to help with an ssp episode and by the end of the episode it turned out that he ended up booking maya for the full disclosure now conference in july in florida so we've also decided to contribute a little bit on that end uh the month of june we're going to be having double episodes of the mad chatter show and all of the guests that's actually the interview that was kind of weird today will be like Laura, I, all panelists, um, speakers, or presenters at the Full Disclosure Now, uh, the extra episodes on the Mad Chatter will, for the month of June will be all of those. Wonderful. Right? Because Brian is one of those people that really has his finger on the pulse of what's going on in our community. And like going out of his way, the first thing the guy did was offer me a half off discount and Dean, can I hook you up with some hotel deals? Right. I'm like, it's not in my budget this year, but that that right there showed me like I, I talked to him for five minutes. Nice. Right. And he's offering me to try and get me there. But no, I 100 percent support the full disclosure now movement. And like I know Rob Kellel is going to be doing the live stream from there. Uh, well, for there, uh, Maya is going to be there. There's going to be Arkeem Raw, Penny Bradley, like some of the biggest names that are the podcast guests are all going to be under one roof. And if you have an opportunity to get over the full disclosure now website, you absolutely should. Um, and as far from that, the rest of my content is on Rumble and YouTube uh, under March 4th Productions, and it is the number four with TH after. Wonderful. Now, <clears throat> we haven't given Ray a chance to say anything. Maybe you have nothing to say. That's okay. I just didn't want to end the program without checking in with you. Nope. Um, thanks for having us back and check out everyone's stuff. I'm, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> he, he had ideas during the show, but we unfortunately all suffer from that wonderful condition of mind wipe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it got him a couple the show maybe well, next week any, bring a book yeah if you have any questions you can always jot them down and then ask them next week so next week we're going to go into food a lot of people don't realize food can be a source of spiritual energy they don't you know they don't really realize that it's a technology in itself so that'll be really interesting and uh so i guess that's it for today uh for quantum health transformation thank you everybody for joining us the listeners and the viewers and wish you the best week ever. And I guess we'll say bye-bye for now. Lion only makes you hurt. The lion only makes it worse. Love and surrender seem the fastest way. 
Bring an end to bitter, painful days Somewhere down the stars are falling Like jewels upon a thin black veil And you will thrill to hear your calling Five billion years Ten thousand galaxies away Yet still so near 